So I would love to vlog out by my chair garden, but I don't think it's going to happen until that house that's up there on the hill is made because they work seven days a week. See them working? Thank goodness for the trees. So I'm going to have to find another place to vlog. I really don't want to do it in the house. I have to find a quieter place. I could go to Gary's garden. <gasps> I could go to Gary's garden. So I really like it here. I mean, it's going to be done, I would think, eventually. They've been working on it for years, but now they're really, really going to town. Oh, and I've got a hummingbird flying around up there, zipping around. See, she's in my chair garden. Oh, I love the hummingbirds so much. Let's see if we can zoom in and see her or him. Well, I'll have to find some place to vlog because I think this is just going to be too loud with the hammering, the cutting, the dropping when they drop stuff. It's so loud when they drop things. Oh, let's see what's down here. Let's see. I see something. This is why I like it here so much. So much wildlife. Now that is a tree squirrel. Um, he's hanging out by Gary's beehives down there. I'm not sure what he's looking for, but the trees drop all kinds of nuts and stuff, you know, different seed pods. That's one thing ground squirrels are really not perfected in climbing. They can climb a little. I've seen them up in tobacco plants and I've seen them go up fences of course but when it comes to really you know what a tree squirrel can do and how agile they are they can go from tree to tree they really can't do that the ground squirrels. That's why they're called ground squirrels because they spend most of their life on the ground they find holes to live in, and the tree squirrels spend most of their life up in the trees where they're more comfortable. So I don't think vlogging is going to be the place here. I'll have to find the place to vlog, and I want to vlog on topics. This way you'll know if you want to just listen to it, what the topic would be. Like I want to vlog on why I like container gardening. Now, I've been here since the 80s, and I did grow a garden in the ground, but you know, it was, it was tough. It was a hit and miss. We brought in a couple big zucchinis, the kids and I, but it was like, oh, we had one and then it was gone because of the squirrels and different things taking it. And then of course the watering and the caring and the taking care of everything because it was in the ground. That's what made it difficult. And so over time, it became a chore. And that's why we gave up gardening. I should do a video on my daughter. That's another thing I could do a, a vlog on. Now, why would I do a vlog on my daughter? Well, she swore she would never garden. She was not gonna garden. She has no place to garden. Yeah, she has no place. She has a nice yard, but no place. She didn't want to. It's gonna be too much time. I tried to talk her into it. No, no, no. And then all of a sudden, we got hit with pandemic. And she's got, you know, it's a total family of five there, three kids, her and her husband and the three kids. I think what happened with her, even though they did start gardening a year earlier, little bits, not like now. When you would go and get online and try to get food and they are out of everything, you know, when the panic first hit and the store shelves were all empty, I think that's when reality hit. And she thought, wait a minute, if they could grow a little, barely trying, can you imagine what they're gonna grow if they even try a little bit more? And I think that's when the gardening really went to town for her. Because now she grows so much stuff. She posts on her Facebook all the stuff she picks. And she says it's nothing. She keeps telling me, oh, mom, I'm nothing. I am, I'm a terrible gardener. My garden looks terrible. A vegetable garden isn't supposed to be beautiful. You want to spend the time to make it beautiful? More power to you. You absolutely can. You can make a vegetable garden look beautiful. But if you don't want to spend that time making it look beautiful, there's nothing wrong with the way it looks if you are producing the food that, my goodness, she was producing. She started bringing in all this food. I mean, she went nuts looking for seeds. And in the beginning, when the pandemic first hit, I will have to say, it was tough finding seeds. I couldn't find seeds. All the seed companies that we dealt with in the United States shut down. That was really difficult because they sold out. And not only did they sell out, some of them are smaller independent people and they didn't want to sell their seeds because they also didn't know what was going to happen. We had a lot of seeds, so I didn't have to worry. There was a few things I wanted, which I ended up getting later. She started buying, and what happened was, and this happened to other people too, including my sister, 
She was buying so many seeds that sometimes when you buy on, let's say, Amazon, you may not know where it's coming from. On eBay, you do. It clearly states, let's say you're buying it from China. It will say that. I've never bought seeds from China. But, you know, you know it. It says origin, where it's coming from. It says China. Well, she ended up getting seeds that were the illegal seeds that went through the mail that were not inspected. You didn't know what they were, and they were labeled something odd, like jewelry, beads, something else. She got those and didn't realize at first. She didn't know. She thought it was seeds she ordered. She didn't plant them, thank goodness. But because it wasn't labeled inside what it was, she contacted all the people, and it took her about a month or so until she realized when she contacted the people, and she did buy some seeds from out of the country, and I don't know what countries they can get here. Those ended up getting confiscated. She got her money back on that. She did buy them on eBay, I believe. So she did get her money back. But the seed she ended up getting one packet was clearly the illegal ones. So she ended up with that. And then my sister ended up with the same thing. She started going nuts looking for seeds. And she couldn't remember. She calls me and tells me she got these seeds from China. I said, did you buy from China? And she answered back to me, I don't think so. I don't think so. You don't know where your seeds are coming from? No. If you didn't buy them from China, don't you dare plant them. And I don't believe she did. So you had all those seeds running through that people were getting. And I don't know. I did a whole articles and an update on that. I'm, uh, I should say videos. And the government's not saying what happened. Some people called it pushing, brushing. It wasn't that. They determined it wasn't that because there was no feedback given. There was no way to give feedback when there wasn't an item sold. So it wasn't that. It could have been, like I said, I don't want to get into that, but it could have been something as simple as the people that were selling, the sellers in China wanted to show that they still had items going out because the government pays for all their shipping fees. Unlike here, the government in China does pay for their shipping fees. So maybe they wanted to show they're still in business, please don't shut us down. And maybe they were pushing out the seeds that way because seeds are cheap, the lightest thing you could possibly sell and send. Or... The government did it on purpose to see what they could get through illegal. Because if you remember, there was an issue some years back where anthrax was going through the mail. This was within the United States. And they couldn't, you know, they didn't know what was in there. And people were having their mail tested. This was years and years ago. So nobody knows. So regardless, when, let's get back to the subject. So when seeds got tough to find, oh, I love this, and I hope you can hear me. I want you to see the fly catcher on the truck bed. So when seeds got hard to find, my daughter started buying seeds from everybody. I sent her to Baker Creek, to Ray, to anybody she could possibly buy from locally, and she ended up getting quite a few seeds from them and other places as well. And she started to grow. She has a mass garden. She is growing orange carrots, red carrots, white carrots. She is growing everything. She even planted sugar cane, fruit trees she planted now. It's going to be a really packed little garden, but my goodness, she puts up these, these photos of all the stuff she's growing. She's even gone to neighbors that were growing things, and they gave her some seeds. She was giving away seeds and plants herself. It's, it's amazing what she's ended up doing. Somebody that did not want to garden at all is now loving her garden, be, not because she's gardening, because she's got food for the family. She said she's making now with the cold weather, and boy, we've been cold down the 42 degrees. She's now making a hot chicken soup and hot vegetable soup with all the garden vegetables from her garden. And there's nothing more fulfilling and rewarding to have some, than to have something you picked in your own garden. It doesn't even have to be everything. You can go buy a can of soup and add in something from your garden. And that adds in really good nutrients. So they're doing wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So I'll try to pick topics and hope you understand that I wish I could do it here, but as long as they're pounding and banging on that home, I really can. I'll get up a little bit. And um, I'm also thinking about what I'm going to do. I've got this whole area and I'm trying to you know, to see what gets the most sun. And right here, I see this is in the shade still because of the pepper tree behind me. And that's got a lot of sun. So I am thinking of putting some ginger against the wall. Setting something up with ginger. And see if I can get ginger to grow all winter, I don't know. But you know, ginger is another thing you can bring in the house and grow too. 
So I'm kind of looking around and determining where I want to plant what. I don't have to, here in Southern California, have to worry too much. The chair garden is going to do fantastic. It's off the ground. That squirrel you saw that down there, they don't even come into the garden. They don't know what the chairs are. They don't want to bother with it. And it's too open. And that's something that squirrels don't like. When it's this open and you have hawks that can come through here, they really don't want to be in too much of an open area, including rats. So this has worked out really good. There's a lot of things to think about when you're setting up a garden as to why you want to set up a garden somewhere, what's the benefit of setting up a garden a certain way, and we have plenty of time now. We've got the holidays we're all thinking about and seeing how that's going to work out. Then we'll have winter to get through and then spring will be here. So it's a perfect time to start thinking about things. Yeah, I just stuck a chair here. Let's see, what did I plant here? I put a lettuce. And it's sitting right in the middle, so it's getting sun. And it's not hot anymore. So you have time now to think about how you want to set up your garden and why. You know, I set this up, I've talked about this, because the hose is here. And see how the hose drags here? Well, it's just easy to walk straight in. I could have done it that way, and that was the other way, to walk straight in from that way. But I kind of like this, plus I can't go further back because this is Gary's driveway. So he takes the trucks and he can go down here, drive down the hill, and he doesn't want me to block that, and he can go down to his garden, which is down the hill. So you know that. So it was, you know, what way did I want to go? I could have gone this way, but then I would have been backed up to the hill. And I didn't want to be backed up to the hill. So I had to keep his driveway open. So there wouldn't be a problem. I'll walk over here real quick so you can see that. Hey, this is his driveway. And he drives his truck down there. So he wanted me to keep this open. Plus, if he ever should decide to get another, you know, a load of wood chips, they do drive down there. So we don't want to block that. And then, I, like I said, I used to have all the family parties here. And this was kept here more like a parking lot. So when everybody showed up and the kids had their birthday parties here, the grandkids and, you know, all the friends and family and the parents would come and they'd park and they'd hang out and walk around and stay here. We kept this as a parking lot here. And, well, now we're not having family parties. I know some of you have said, just have the parties and don't worry about it. It's not just that. It's not just me. A lot of my family members and people I know are bunkering down and they don't want to get together and they're they don't want to take any chances and I don't blame them. So my grandson's got an impaired immune system. He was born that way and they're thinking it came from me because it's hereditary where it's an overactive. And it could be. I, as a kid, had a lot of issues. So, like I can't take a flu shot my body attacks the flu shot, literally, the arm. And they tried both arms, it doesn't matter, it attacks it. My arm swells up, I get a knot, and it takes about six months to a year for that knot to go away because the doctors have determined I wall off whatever they put in the flu shot, I wall it off. It's an overactive immune system, which could be good, and at times, not so good. So, you know, it's, like I said, it's not just me, it's the other people I know. So nobody wants to get together. So we haven't seen anybody. I went to my parents twice. But anyways, getting back to the gardening, I definitely want to put a chair garden here. And like I said, you have to think about how you want a garden. I could bring it through and come around this way, but then if I walk into it this way, I'm kind of dragging the hose around. I think I'm going to do the same thing and make a clone like that, but I've got different ideas to make it look really cute here. And again, I can't bring it back any further. I'm probably going to line it up. Uh, somebody said make an orchestra where you would put another layer of chairs all the way around. Well, I would cut in to Gary's driveway, number one. And number two, it cuts down on the, the surface of me to take care because I can, you know, take care and service the garden from both sides, inside or out. They do fill out quite a bit in the spring and summer. You know, the, the squash gets massive. Even the tomato plants are much bigger than that. And it would be dragging a hose on the inside, which if I want to bring the hose in, and yes, I can hand water, for me personally, it'd be a whole lot more work. So I'm not going to do it that way. But for somebody else that has a yard and they want to make it that way, it would look beautiful. I will just say, it, 
with the colored chairs around and having layers go around and around, if you've got that space, it would look beautiful, but it would stick out too much on that end. And again, if Gary should decide to get a truckload of wood chips again, they would not be able to get through. Right now they can. They can get through where his pond is and through where the back of the chairs are. So I could put multiples. I could put a chair garden here and another chair garden, obviously. I have enough now to put two chair gardens together and I might make one in my other garden too, my main garden. So I'm kind of deciding. This is the perfect time to decide. I want to do a vlog just on containers, why I like containers. Something you can just listen to and not have to watch, and if you want to watch, fine. And then talk about different plants and why I grow certain plants and why I don't grow certain plants. There's a lot of things to vlog about. So I think for now, I came out here to watch nature and I've seen some hummingbirds, we've seen a squirrel, and flycatchers. I can hear a lot of little birds in the trees. This is the big pepper tree that is shading out the sun. See the sun up there? So this time of the year, it shades out the sun. I'll take you around and show you all the different gardens, how they're set up. Not today, but as we get into spring, because I think it's really good to see. And then you'll understand why certain things grow so well. See the papayas? They're going to get sun almost all day from morning till night. And I guess they are actually. They will get sun even as it travels up the papayas are going to get sun and that's what saves those even at 40 degrees in the winter because they have the sun all day long and that's very important. So I'll take you around and do that on what gardens are set up which way because they're all set up different and they're growing different things. I can't grow ginger back here but I'm starting to think I can grow ginger back here in the winter. So We'll see. Otherwise, ginger, you can drag it in the house, like I said, or leave it. I'm going to harvest it soon. We're getting cold. I see my ginger in the front starting to get a little brown and my turmeric. So I'll probably, I see all the birds flying around, probably harvest that and see what I'm going to grow. As far as food, as I was saying, the greens here love it. They don't mind 40 degrees. And I've got all kinds of Swiss chard growing in there. I've got squash growing in the truck bed. The truck bed is in the sun again all day. So that metal must stay really warm. And this is going to do probably really, really good. And maybe in the spring, a lot of it will either die back or we'll take it back and start growing something else. I don't think I'm going to grow an array of squash anymore because I don't really like these different squash. I really like zucchini and I see a zucchini back there and I want to get that soon. So we've got a lot of these round squash and you bake those up and they're fine but I like zucchini. Zucchini is my favorite. I can gr I can cook anything with a zucchini. Let's see here's the oh that blue we had so much wind I gotta move that. So that's it. So I'll think about you know that and if you can give me ideas on what you want me to vlog on I can do that too. And this is amazing. I still can't get over the chairs. This is going to be so much fun. I have so many ideas on what I can use chairs for. But like I said, if you've just got a single pot, you want it off the ground, I just put some lettuce in there. Just sitting it off the ground. I have not painted the chair or done anything with it yet. Just wanted to start getting some of this lettuce out. And this is all lettuce. These are hundreds and hundreds of little lettuce. Now, if I leave them like this, and they're in here, well, they're not going to grow. They're going to get about that big. A couple of them will take off, but the rest will not. So I would have to move them in order to get them to grow. And I see some popolo coming up, too. See, popolo gets eaten. See the popolo? There's a few there. But see, when you protect it with a cup, look how big these are. That's because the roly pulleys and little insects like eating them. But when you stop them with like a yogurt cup, a cottage cheese container cup, cut the bottom cut open and you put it on top, well, they tend to just skip it and they leave it alone. Perfect way to grow seeds. And this is what's going to happen in the spring. This is tomatoes. And I'll be picking up that. Yeah, there's a nice lettuce growing and celery. I don't want celery. That's an eggplant I planted there. But see, when I throw the tomatoes in here, Seeds aren't even in this anymore. The seeds are going to go into the soil and they have like a little clock in them. And some of them are not going to grow. Now this one grew because we had some warm weather. But now that the weather's cooling, Mother Nature is telling it, nope, don't grow. And you could just collect them like this, put it away, and 
just take the, the fruit if it's still dry you know just leave it and throw it in the soil or you can pop it open and plant it but it's going to grow later and then I can move them and I'll have all the tomato plants I want when the spring comes unless I go to the nursery and pick some up I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do so we'll see what I'm going to vlog about I'll try to make vlogs where it's topic so it could be one on lettuce one on greens one on zucchini one on tomatoes uh, what I'm growing now what's going on nothing's going on now Molly had her teeth done she had some bad teeth in the back had that pulled yesterday she's doing fine and you know otherwise we're home we're working and Gary's got his projects and as soon as he's through with some of the projects he said he's working on he wants to get back and finish his pond we can walk over here he's got a whole video he's going to put together but he's thinking it may be the wrong time of the year nobody may be interested right now because they're not quite building ponds it is amazing what he's come up with on that and then this has worked out really good but it's going to look nice when he's done and no hurry absolutely no hurry hurry and then he's planting a lot of plants he's got the aloe vera and he moved some of them because he had problems with gophers the gophers like aloe vera but they don't like elephant food and elephant food's got an extra bonus if something ever happened and you couldn't get enough food you can eat elephant food it's loaded with vitamins so he's going to plant more elephant food it's drought resistant it really likes almost any soil and it's just an all-around great plant to have when you don't know what to plant so that's all I'm doing today. Just wanted to say hello. Just came out here to think how I want to set this up and what else I'm going to do with chairs. I can't even imagine to see this piled on the street and to end up realizing they were throwing these away. Oh my gosh. Well, with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.